folks, we're at the Wine Harvest Festival in Ensenada, Mexico. So let's see how this magnificent event plays out. Stay with us. You know, one of the side trips you can take when you come to Ensenada is to Valle de Guadalupe, the Guadalupe Valley, which some call the Napa Valley of Mexico. During June and September, most wineries include concerts with Spanish recording artists. This year, it was Mijares at the L.A. Cheto Winery. Okay, so we're at the wine festival and one of the uh, treats that the Cheto family, the Cheto winery is giving to the public today is a concert by singer Mijares. And he just arrived right now in his uh, big bourbon and I guess the press is ready for him. So let's see what they do, okay? So we're with Mr. Marco Amador, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> now I understand that that Baja is basically the main producer of wine in all of Mexico, isn't it? Yeah, over so here. So if Baja. you guys are the main producers of Baja. Of Mexico. You, you guys are the main producer of Mexico, right? Yeah. <laughs> Baja Golfina produces around 95% of the Mexican marketing really? wine. That much? Yeah, that much. So so tell me about your grapes. What, what kind of grapes are these? Those are a Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a Cabernet. Can I take one off? Sure. Okay. Uh, those, they're going to be in two to three weeks. Right now, we're harvesting our white grapes. Red grapes are going to be in two to three weeks ready. Their the acidity is not ready, but in the sweetness also. It doesn't taste bad though. No, it doesn't taste bad, <laughs> but but it's not ready yet. Not ready yet. <laughs> so for folks back home in the states who maybe have never been to a harvest festival like the Vendimia here in Cheto, what can you tell our folks? What can they expect if folks from the U.S. come to this event? Well, it's a large event. <laughs> From noon to midnight. <laughs> noon to midnight. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of wine, a lot of nice people, music, bullfights, fireworks, uh, almost everything. So there you have it, folks. If you want wine, food, a uh, concert, all the good stuff that a uh, wine harvest festival has, then this is one of the main ones in all of Mexico, actually, L.A. Cheto. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, coming. For uh, Mr. Amador for talking to us. Thank you so much. I'll enjoy the rest of the day. Okay, we will. seem to be enjoying this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's easy to enjoy. It's easy. <laughs> What's the best thing about this festival, Thomas? Well, it's a combination of things. It's the great people that are involved with this whole festival, but it's also the beauty of this land. You know, the, this valley is, is an awesome uh, part of, yeah, it's an oasis of Baja, and it's so cl close to the United States where you can just simply drive here and enjoy this lush greenery and the the wine isn't bad either. <laughs> it's like it's like going to Napa, but south of the border. Oh, really? A lot less expensive. Less. <laughs> we really appreciate you guys oh, taking the time to talk to us, and please yeah. continue enjoying uh, your time here at Cheto. Thank you. This is Crossing South, folks. Stay with us. Well, folks, we're here in Crossing South with Mr. David Bibayov. Hi. Mr. David, nice to meet you. Thank you. Same to. He is the owner of the Bibayov uh, Winery here in Baja. And Bibayov is not a Mexican last name, is it, Mr. David? Uh, Russian. It's Russian. Yeah. Bigabariu Paruski? Bigabariu Paruski. Ah, Ratsba mi posnakomitsya. Very nice to meet you, my yeah. friend. Tell me, tell me the story, David. How, how, how in the world... <laughs> Is there a okay. Russian winery in Baja? Well, what story you want to? The first one or the last one? Tell me the first one first. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first one is a, it's a tradition from my grandfathers that used, they came to the valley, and they used to make some wine. Did they make it back in Russia? They used no. to make wine over there. No, they. In the religion we have, we also we are not allowed to have alcohol in our community. Uh, 
they came here because uh, they were persecuted for the religion to be soldiers. Religious soldier. persecution uh, yeah. brought them to Baja. Uh, and they came to Baja, they chose this place because it was uh, alone, or no, not many people here. So no they, one they, to bother them here. Yeah. They could do whatever they want here. Can, can you tell me how they, they, they came over here? I mean, out of all the places they could have left, I mean, I don't even know, I'm trying to imagine what port they even left from, you know? Did they leave from, you know, the Asian side above China, through the no. through Europe? I mean, how did they even come over here from well, the, Baja? Ellis Island. Ellis Island? Yeah. Okay, New York. New yeah. York, and by the Santa Fe Railroad to Los Angeles, and from there. And they left from uh, Germany. Even I have a copy of the ticket they paid for. What year was this? 1906. <laughs> 1906? Yeah. So pre-World War One. Yeah, I was... Oh wow! I mean, it's they, almost they they skip everything. The czars were still were still in Russia, yeah. right? <laughs> well, they were lucky. In the, well, we were lucky. <laughs> it, it was before the uh -huh. the whole Bolshevik uh, revolution. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And we do, we're doing what we like, you know, grapes, some a little bit wine. Ochen harashwa. Ah, And speaking of that, tell us about your wine. Uh, what, what, what can we find? What can uh, visitors expect to find behind the Bibayov name uh, of wine? Well, we, we, we try to keep the tradition Russians used to make because it's not easy to keep it the old ways because uh, when they made was for a short time because the grapes they picked was too sweet. Back then? Back then. Okay. Here they, they, in, in this region? Yes. It was too sweet? No, it, it wasn't too sweet. They let, let it Take, okay. uh, let it to get, uh, ripen more, okay. and then let it dry a little bit, and then we crush it, and more sugar, more alcohol lasted longer, okay. but not from one year to another. Okay. 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 But you have to put like the, the modern time, you have to put sulfites to make uh, wine last, so something you cannot go without. It. Okay. Okay. So, so your wine is more on the sweet side now, then? No, I have both sides. You have both, um, yeah, both yeah. sides of the spectrum. Yeah. Okay. I have reds and whites. No, not too many. Only three reds and three whites. Hey, no, no, no quantity. Quality is, is better, well, right? Well, <laughs> that's the idea. Duh, uh, yeah. duh. <laughs> well, we do the best we can. Right. That's right. the main thing. It's a, it's a micro winery, right? Yeah. It's well, a family, kind of like family oriented. Yeah. But I, the grapes I have is. A lot more than the wine I make. I sell, we sell the grapes to the wineries and the owners that make wine, and just we keep some for for, for us. It, it, it's really nice to see something so ethnic and so different than the native culture of Baja, and the fact that it's home to a place like yours. Uh, it makes you very unique. I don't know if you uh, know that, but it makes you very unique in this in this region. You know, the Bibayof Winery has a small family museum with photographs and relics from the time the Bibayobs first came to Mexico. They make, used to make adobe with the horses when they make a lot. Here is straw and mud, water, and they just use the horses. Making adobe for the buildings. Uh -huh. And they used to make uh, quilts like this from uh, wool. That's the way they used to dress it. Okay. Okay. And, and well, this is a small just for, for... And those are the old-time uh, tools that they used. Yeah. What's the, the name of it? Matrushkas. Matrushka. But you put one inside of each yeah. one, right? Mm -hmm. No fur hats here no, in Baja. No, no. <laughs> no fur hats here in Baja. Not even in Russia. Really? Yeah. So... That's the religion, that's it. Oh. Uh, the fur is was for soldiers. For soldiers, really? Well, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've seen the past, let us see the present. Let's go to the Bibayov Vineyards. At, at any time of the year, do you water it? Never? Uh, only rain. Really? Yeah. And, and that is enough? Well, if you see no, no drip irrigation here, what, what happens if you have better condition, you have a lot more grapes. Uh-huh. But... So the, just quantity is what's effective. Uh, well, yeah. The well, taste does not suffer. Uh, well, yeah. Less grape, better wine. Wow. You know, not that I don't believe you, but I think I need to try it just to be sure. Can we do that? Well, right now or tomorrow? Yeah, right now. Well, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so this bottle represents finished product. From, from the grapes. From, from the grapes. Sinfandel grapes we have here. And you're saying less grapes, 
make better taste. Yes. So you don't mind if we try it, right? Uh, okay, so. So you know, you, you're going to have a night, nightmare if you don't do it. <laughs> so tell me when. That's it. That's it, okay. Let's try the next one. Okay, smell first, taste second, and. <sighs> Very nice smell. Oh, wow. Oh, it is really good. This will take uh, like two, three more years. If you have patience to wait, it will be better. Oh, I have patience. Okay. So can I come back in three years? Mañana. Mañana. <laughs> well, you know, mañana, mañana, mañana. You know. Mañana three years or yeah. literal mañana? No, mañana, mañana 1,000 times. It's three, mañana. <laughs> it's one, three 1, years. 1,000 mañanas. So yeah. in three years. In yeah, three no. years, this one will be better. Yeah. Well, it tastes pretty good to me right now. Yes. Tell you that uh, much. Yeah. You didn't, believe, you didn't believe me, but... Debidovsky, my friend Dobsky. Moi harasho brat Bolshoi espasiva. Espasiva. Dos bidania here. Goodbye from uh, Bibaif Winery. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, my friend. And uh, don't tell him that I'm taking this home, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sneaker. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Everyone we talked to said that we could not visit Valle de Guadalupe and not go to the Adobe Guadalupe Winery. We would soon find out why. Thank you very much for allowing us to be Thank here. Thank you, it's our pleasure. Thank, tell us about it. How did you guys end up down here in Baja? Drew? Donald? <laughs> <laughs> You're much better at explaining it. We heard about the Valle de Guadalupe and uh, my husband, of course, who's American, has um, had his whole life a passion for wine. For wines. Unfortunately, yes. he had to work before retiring. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he was a banker in Southern California. Okay. And the minute he was retired, he wanted to grow grapes. And here we are. Perfect combination. He knew about money and then he was retired. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and he said, you said, he's American. What are you? I'm Dutch. You're Dutch? Yes. Uh -huh. huh. Dutch living in Baja. And yes. I heard through the grapevine that you have another nationality now. I am Mexican as well. Wow. He, she became a Mexican citizen? Very good. <laughs> we really didn't know what to expect. We just came down here, said, why don't we buy some property, introduced ourselves, and it's been a great experience. Your initial intention was probably to go to Sonoma or of course. wine country in California. How were you detoured down south. How did you cross out well, to do this? We got involved in an orphanage. That true. And so we got in La Mission. Uh -huh. So we got involved in an orphanage, came down, started to taste the wines, visited most of the wine growing areas in the world. Didn't even, lived in Laguna Beach. Didn't even realize there was a wine area here in Mexico. So we started tasting wine, started, started tasting Chateau. Uh oh, there's some down here. Chateau's de Nebliolo. I thought, my gosh. This is pretty good stuff. Climate-wise, it's very similar to Paso Robles Where is... in California. Okay. And that's because uh, it's hot, close to the ocean. The, the Rhone-style varietals do very well in this climate. So it's a Mediterranean climate. Okay. Are we going to get to taste some of your wine and, and the things that you of course. Uh, cook for? And I'm going to a... invite you for <laughs> dinner. And maybe you can even work with our chef. <laughs> okay. I'd be happy to. So, so stay with us, folks. We're here. This is Crossing South. Stay with us. The Millers are very interesting people. Dawn showed us the scenery, and Through showed us a bit of her Dutch heritage. But she also showed us her main passion. Tell me, how in the world did you ever end up uh, breeding horses down here in Baja? Well, when we came down here, my husband, of course, had a passion for the wine. Uh -huh. and I had to do something too. And I've always loved, loved horses. And uh, so when I heard about the, uh, the lovely Azteca horses from Numec, I just wanted to be part of it. We're doing incredible things. We are mixing. With the wines, we are blending. With the horses, we are blending too. You're blending horses. We take Which kinds? an Andalusian horse. Andalusian, that's from Spain? That's from Spain. Uh -huh. And we put that horse together with a quarter horse from the United States. Okay. And then an Andalusian is a beautiful horse. But an Andalusian is like a husband. There's always something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the shoulder hurts, the knee hurts. Oh, really? Yes. So we really need to uh, needed to find um, a horse that was more resistant. Okay. So the quarter horse, like a Mustang, is very, right. very resistant. Built to run. So we want the, the looks 
of, a, of an Andalusian horse. The endurance. And the endurance. Of a quarter horse. That's it. And that's what we're doing here. Oh, so, so the blend becomes what? It becomes the Azteca. Really? Yes, and that's the, the pride and joy and the national horse of Mexico. So is this what this these are? This is what Andalusian this is. Andalusian quarter makes Azteca. That's right. You got it. She's the champion. Yes. Annabelle, you're the winner of all of Mexico. So she's the Azteca champion. Very, very nice horse. Beautiful horse. She, she doesn't think she is a horse. Oh, really? No. <laughs> she thinks she is a princess. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you are a princess, aren't you, Annabelle? Wow. And, and you ride a horse? Yes, yes, we do. Um, we do dressage. And, uh, and then we do the, the trails outside in Baja California with these horses. And that's what you can do with these horses because they're strong. They, they, uh, but they're better beautiful. Right, right, right. So you have the beauty side of it, which we see. It is evident. Yes. It's a very, very sturdy uh, gal. Yes. But, but she also looks beautiful. Exactly. Right. That's the idea. And, and, and tell me, you, you train them? You do anything yes. else with them? Marcy trains them in dressage and in, in handling them, of course. Uh -huh. And so she works with them every day. And in handling, you mean what by handling? Making sure that the horse knows what you want and what you, where you want to go and want him to stop, want to... So you can ride him, basically. Yes, exactly. So it's a docile horse. So if, she, if they don't go through that training, it'll, it'll be a very difficult horse to ride? Oh, yes. Oh, I mean, really? you, and you couldn't ride a horse if it wasn't trained. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> okay. yes. But who who breaks them in? Who falls down breaking them in? Well, we have a person for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you, right? No. <laughs> no. No. Okay, no, it's Annabelle. not me. Who did you throw down, Annabelle, uh, on your way to being a champion? As remarkable as through Azteca horses are, Adobe Guadalupe is best known for its wine. And Don was not about to let us go without experiencing his side of the tour. So, so how long does it take from the moment you have ground, basically, you plant? David, it's, it's three years when you plant the grapes before you get any wine. Okay. Another year in the barrel, another year in the bottle, so it's five years before you get any before you can sell any of the wine. The quality of the wine industry in Baja has dramatically improved. Can you tell me when that happened? At what point and what event maybe made that happen, that change of perception? As the quality of the wine became better and people started to recognize that this was world-class wine, then gradually, and then you had the salespeople at the restaurants, being the sommeliers and the and the waiters recommending. And so it just it was something that gradually got to be accepted. And, and, and then when wine from Baja started winning prizes, right. I take even, it that's part of even, it, right? Even more so. Mr. Miller wanted to educate me by making me go through the gauntlet of his wine catalog. I was only happy to oblige. Proverbs says that wine rejoices the heart of mortal man. I could not agree more. I'm telling you folks, this is one of the things you can do when you cross out. <laughs> can I have another glass of this? <laughs> <laughs> Our day at Adobe Guadalupe is almost done. But we still have one more stop. Adobe Guadalupe chef Martha Manriquez showed me around her lovely kitchen and we had much fun making a few dishes. Well, she was making dishes. For a foodie like me, being a chef's wingman for an evening 
it's a very happy place to be at. Wow. I must admit, I'm not the most avid mashed potato eater. But this is really good stuff. Mmm. Such a good taste. But the dessert was really the highlight I was waiting for. Okay, so we're gonna do dessert now, okay? What are we doing? Crepes. Crepes, okay. Crepes, uh, we're gonna do crepes. So what's the first part, what, what do we do? La leche es una taza de leche. La it's a cup of milk. Yeah. So just one egg. Like that? Okay. <laughs> the egg right there. <laughs> Two sugar spoons, okay. So we'll pour the the oil and the vanilla, like so. Okay. So half a cup of flour, and we keep mixing it, right? We we wait for an hour, you know, while they put it on the fridge. So that's what we're doing right now. Okay. Okay. So after an hour, our batter is done. Okay, let's let's try to. That was too thin. That was too thin. <laughs> A little. No, no, no. <laughs> I was too thin. <laughs> okay, you're gonna help me with the next one. Okay. <laughs> I was too thin and it wasn't squared. Uh, it has no shape whatsoever. It's like it's like Pangea. So you will help me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Chef Martha is going to have me eat my own horrible crepe. <laughs> There's no real shape to it if you take a look at that big old gap. Uh, let's see how the pros do it now. Let's see how you, let's see you do it. Let's see if it, if it looks like mine. <laughs> the pressure's on. Oh, and she totally scores it. Yeah, um, take a look at that. <laughs> Yeah, not even close. Okay. I, I'm embarrassed. Um, yes, you, you're, you're the pro. You're the pro. I yield to your expertise. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put the cream in the middle. Is this too much or is this good? All right, you can never have too much cream. Let's put some more. Okay. Okay. So now what? Okay. So like that, that's good. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I was just being a smart Alec. There you go. Is that enough? <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna be able to do a triangle with this, but I'll try. Okay. Okay. Kind of. Okay. We're kind of even up. Let's just. Put more, <laughs> more. <laughs> let's just put, let's just pour all of it. Just pour it all. Just pour it all. <laughs> it's so good. It looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to compensate for my deficient crepe. And some blueberries. Okay. And where do I put them? Just like that. It's delicious. It is delicious. It is delicious. Wow. Oh, this is so good. It's been a long day here in Baja's wine country. We hope you enjoyed Crossing South. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Adobe Guadalupe is many things. A winery, an inn, a horse breeding stable, a restaurant, and a home and they opened their doors to us today. We enjoyed it very much. Valle de Guadalupe is a must-visit stop, not only for Baja, but for Mexico. 
The wine is wonderful, the food is phenomenal, the scenery is breathtaking, and its people are superb hosts. We hope you can continue with us on our many journeys as we cross south. You can find maps and information about the places you just saw, or you may order a copy of this program on DVD at CrossingSouth.com. We also do Facebook.